Hello lovely people and welcome back to the Adams Eats Kitchen. How are we all? Hope you're well and you've got a nice fun packed weekend coming up. I should be working, as always. Now today's video is all about steak um, and how to cook one. Now I have done a video on this before, way back in the channel's early days. Uh, it was a bit long winded, a bit naff, uh, the lighting wasn't very good and my presenting skills weren't that great back then and also the thumbnail wasn't very good either. Um, so I'm just going to kind of update it a bit, make it a bit more fresh and hopefully a bit more informative. Now along with the steak we're going to serve it up with some nice spicy wedges and also a cheats bernays. Now bernays sauce and steak just go absolutely wonderful together but all right, bernays sauce isn't the easiest thing to make, all right? It can take a bit of time. You can turn it from a good bernays into a pile of rubbish in seconds, right? You know, if you've got lots of stuff going on, you know, you've got your steak on the go, you've got your chips or your salad, you know, to make a bernays sauce takes a little bit of concentration. So I'm gonna show you my way, uh, which is really simple. It uses creme fraiche, butter, some shallots and some tarragon. You mix it all up and you can just leave it to one side and then just serve it up when you're ready. So without further ado folks, if you hit that pause button, make a list of what you need, and the first thing we'll do is make our potato wedges. Right, potato wedges then, an absolute doddle to make. Now I've got some Maris Piper potatoes here. You could use Desire, King Edwards, uh, or Russet, uh, any good roasting potato. Now I'm not gonna need all of these, because uh, there's only me eating. Obviously you can scale up this recipe if you're serving more people. So I'm gonna go for three potatoes. That's probably more than I need, but I'm feeling quite hungry. Okay, then we're gonna get a knife. And I've got a bowl of cold water here, uh, just to help rinse off some of that excess starch. Now you're not gonna peel them, all you're gonna do is just chop them lengthways to two halves, uh, and then in half again, and then you see where it comes to a point. You just wanna get as close to the point as possible, and then again, just cut it into a wedge. Basically, until you've got potato wedges. Funny that, isn't it? Try and get them roughly the same size so they cook nice and evenly. I think I'm just gonna go for the two potatoes, because that's gonna be plenty for me. All right, stop being greedy, Adam. So once you put the wedges into the water, just give them a quick swish round uh, to get off some of that excess starch. Drain them, and then we can add the flavorings. Right, so I've drained off the uh, potatoes and I just lightly patted them dry with a bit of kitchen paper just to get off the excess moisture. And now we can add the flavorings. Now, you can do whatever you like. You know, just use salt, pepper, some garlic powder, you know, some chili powder, some herbs in there. You know, do what you like. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is use some of this chili because it needs using up. So it's gonna take off the end. I don't really want the seeds, so I'm gonna get rid of those. And then I'm just gonna finely chop it. Incidentally, I don't actually know how hot this chili is. I should probably just try a bit. Yeah, that's quite spicy. I don't know if I should put all of that in. Now to heck with it. Okay, so let's move that board out of the way. I've also got my oven preheated to gas mark five, so it's nice and hot, ready for the wedges to go in. Generous pinch of salt, some black pepper. Next, I'm gonna go in with some smoked paprika, just to give it that nice barbecue vibe. I would say about half a teaspoon, you don't need loads. Then I'm gonna add about a dessert spoon of oil. If you're wondering why I've got oil in a jar, uh, I fried something in it and I didn't wanna waste it. Right, so now I've got a roasting tray and what we need to do is give these a good old mix. So get your hands in there and make sure all of that potato is coated in those flavorings. Okay, so once they look like that, you can get them onto your roasting tray. And then just simply spread them out on your roasting tray. Make sure there's a nice bit of space between them so they get a nice even cooking. And those puppies are now ready for the oven. Now the wedges will take around about 30 to 40 minutes to cook. You wanna turn them halfway through just so all sides get nice and crispy. And whilst those are cooking in the oven, we can get on and make our cheats bernays. Shh, won't tell anyone. Right, to make the cheats bernays is really, really easy. I've got a shallot here, which I'm gonna peel. And then we just wanna finely chop it and then just gather it up and get that over to your pan. And then to that pan, I'm just gonna add a tiny knob of butter and then a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. And then I'll turn that onto a very low heat. And all we're looking to do once that butter's melted is to evaporate that vinegar and gently fry the shallots just until they're slightly cooked. Uh, you still want a bit of bite to them though. So that'll take about, I don't know, a minute or so. Okay, so once that vinegar has evaporated, you can turn off the heat. Then you want to add about two tablespoons of creme fraiche about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard and about a tablespoon of tarragon. Now I'm using dried here because uh, I haven't got any fresh because it's quite hard to get hold of in the shops. But if you can get fresh, then by all means use that. 
Give that a good old mix up. Let's give it a quick taste. Woohoo! That is twangy. If you find it's too sharp, you can always add a little pinch of sugar just to balance it out a bit. Another taste. Mmm, perfect. Now what's brilliant about this cheese Bernays is it'll quite happily sit to one side until everything's ready. Unlike a traditionally made Bernays, you know, that you've got to pay attention to, you've got to serve it straight away. That's what I love about this sauce. So that'll quite happily sit on the back of the hob until everything's ready. Right, okay, the Bernays sauce is done. Well, the cheese Bernays sauce is done. We're about halfway through cooking the wedges. I've just turned them over and they're about 20 minutes away from being done. So now we need to talk about the steak, right? Which is probably the most important part of this dish. Now I'm not gonna lie to you that cooking a steak can be quite difficult, right? It takes practice. Trust me because I've cooked plenty of bad steaks in my life. But if you've never cooked a steak before, I'm gonna give you some hints and tips uh, just to make life a lot easier. Now the first thing is, is to know what kind of steak you're buying. Right, there's loads and loads of different cuts out there. You know, you've got sirloin, you've got ribeye, you've got fillet steak, you've got hanger steak. You know, there's so many different ones. And it's all down to personal preference as to which one you like. Personally, my favorite is ribeye, which is the cut we're using today. I would say stay away from fillet. It's overrated, it's really expensive, and it's only really good for things like beef wellington. It's got no real flavor or character. It's just really, really tender. But you can get that same tenderness from any other steak if you cook it properly. Now, what you need to look out for when you're buying your steak from a supermarket or a butcher is that your steak has got a nice marbling of fat, which is what this has here. A ribeye is very distinct in that it's got a nice nugget of fat right in the middle of the steak. And you can see all this marbling that's running all the way through the meat. Don't buy lean steaks, right? Because your steak needs to have fat in it in order to lubricate it through the cooking process and keep it moist and also adds lots of flavor as well. So make sure you've got lots of fat running through it. Most of that will render out and disperse through the meat. Uh, so don't worry about if you're being health conscious. I mean, if you're eating steak, you're not really health conscious anyway, are you? Let's be honest. Another tip for you is to make sure that your steak is at room temperature before you cook it. If it's fridge cold, it's gonna mess with your cooking times. Now, another thing as well is how you like your steak cooked. Now, I don't know about you, I like my medium rare. Anything above that, to me, it's knackered especially if it's well done. You're never gonna get a nice, juicy, moist steak if it's well done. But if that's what you like, then, you know, it's your choice. Now, when you're cooking your steak, uh, there's an easy method on how to test how well done it is. And that's using the finger method. Now, all you need to do is just have your palm open like that, make sure your hand is quite loose. And if you press that podgy bit at the bottom of your thumb, touch that, touch your steak, and it feels the same, you know that it's raw. And if you get your index finger and meet the two together, and then press it, that's rare. Again, if you go to that finger, press it, touch your steak, that's medium rare. Next finger along, press it, that's medium well. And then the next finger along, that's well done, basically knackered. All right, have something else if you get that far. I, I, I'm joking, I'm joking, all right? I'm sure there's people out there that enjoy their steaks well done. I don't. And the last few little things for you is to make sure that your pan is screaming hot, all right? Don't put steak into a cold pan because it'll boil and you'll just end up with a grey flabby mess. Nice screaming hot pan, make sure all the windows and doors are open. And the most crucial thing is once you've cooked your steak is to let it rest. All right, so you need to put it on a board. Uh, you can lightly cover it with tin foil if you want to and just leave it the heck alone, all right? Don't touch it, don't prod it with a knife or a fork. Don't even look at it, all right? Just leave it alone for a good five minutes. Because what's happening there is that the steak is reabsorbing all those juices and that's what gives you that nice even pink color all the way through and keeps it super, super juicy. If you don't do that and you just chuck it out the pan, slice straight into it, all that juice will just come running out and you'll just end up with a dry steak. Trust me, all right, I've had many bad steaks when I've gone out for meals, cut into it and it's just bleeding everywhere and that's because they haven't rested it. I mean, it's inevitable, you will get a little bit of juice come out, but by resting it, most of it will be reabsorbed back into the steak. Okay, so that's your steak masterclass done. We're just gonna wait until the wedges are almost done and we'll crack on and cook the steak. Okay, so my wedges are pretty much cooked. Uh, they're gonna sit in the oven and just, you know, tick over whilst we get on and cook the steak. Now I'm gonna cook this steak very, very simply. I'm not gonna do anything fancy with it because um, I think if you've got a really good steak, you know, you don't need to do anything to it. So all I'm going to do is just take a garlic clove, cut it in half and just rub the outside of the steak, flip it over, same the other side. And I'm also going to preheat my pan, get it nice and hot. And now I'm going to just add a little bit of olive oil just to each side. Just rub that in. You don't need loads just enough to lubricate it. Never add the oil to the pan because you'll end up with smoke everywhere. Okay, and then we're just going to add some pepper, plenty of it, flip it over, some on the other side. 
and that's it that's all we're going to do to the steak i've not put any salt on um, the reason being is if you put salt on a steak before you cook it okay salt draws out moisture so we want to avoid that so what we'll do is we'll just season it with salt once it's cooked right so my pan is nice and hot i can feel the heat coming off it so i'm going to get our steak in Okay, that's the sound you want to hear. If it's not making that noise, it's not hot enough. Don't pot it around, leave it for about a minute on this side uh, if you want it medium rare. Again, as it's cooking, use the finger method that I showed you. Press the base of your thumb like that, then touch the steak. I mean, that's, that's proper rare, so you know we've got a way to go yet. So I think about a minute that side, and then we'll flip it over. All right, so it's had about a minute. I've just flipped over the steak, and as you can see, it's got some nice caramelization on there. That's all flavor, that's what you want. So again, I'm gonna give it another minute this side, and then we'll turn off the heat. Right, so I think my steak is done now. I'm just gonna give it a quick press. Yep, I would say that's about medium rare. I'm gonna get this off onto our board. And this is where we need to let it rest, okay? Now I know that steak's about medium rare, and I'm just gonna add a little knob of butter onto the steak as it rests. Okay, so again, leave that alone for about three to five minutes. Don't cut into it or anything like that. Just leave it alone. Don't touch. Right, so this steak has been resting now for about three or four minutes. You know, I can give it a press, and I know that that's about medium rare. And now it's time to serve up, so I'm gonna get this steak onto a warm plate. Okay, any juices that come off, don't worry about that, we're gonna use those. All of that juice can go into your Bernays. And I've got our wedges here, I'm gonna add a nice big pile of those, nice and crispy. And just for a bit of color, I'm gonna add some rocket, or arugula, I think they call it in the States. And I'll just add a bit of olive oil to that, a little pinch of salt. And then we've got our cheats Bernays sauce, which I've added the steak juices to, and I've just gently warmed it through. So we'll add a nice spoonful of that. Now, I don't know about you folks, but that looks like one delicious plate of food, right? I can't wait, let's tuck in. Now, I'm gonna taste it off camera here because I wanna do a nice close-up shot of this steak. I'm gonna go for this nice end bit. And there we have it, look, can you see how nice and pink that is? Nice and medium rare. Let's give it a try. It's nice and juicy because it's well rested. Right, you can see there's no like loads of juice spilling out on the plate. Go for a bit of that Bernays. You wouldn't know it was a cheats Bernays. It's got the same characteristics. It's nice and punchy. It's got that twang of the vinegar and that nice kind of aniseed flavor from the tarragon. Right, let's try one of these wedges. Right, I'm fearful of these. I just think they're gonna be really, really spicy because of all that chili I put on. Let's have a try. Actually, they're not that bad. Bit of kick to them, but they're nice and crispy. Got a slight barbecue flavor from that smoked paprika. I shan't bother with the rocket, because let's be honest, no one really gives a monkeys about it. And there we have it, folks. How to cook a steak. And also some wedges thrown in as well. And that's super simple cheats Bernays. Those wedges are kicking in now. Ooh, I think I need something to uh, wet my whistle. Yes, it's a beer, and yes, it's delicious. I do drink beer, mostly a wine drinker myself, but when it comes to the summer, I just like something nice and cold and fizzy. Anyway guys, that about wraps up today's episode. So thanks again for tuning in and watching. And also I'm really excited because I'm almost there at 1000 subscribers. And I have decided I'm gonna do a live Q&A. Uh, I'm kind of a bit nervous about it because I'm just worried that no one will show up, <laughs> which will be really embarrassing. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, I don't know if I'll do it exactly on 1000 subscribers or a bit after. Um, it just depends on my schedule and work and life and all that kind of stuff. But as soon as I've figured it out and how it all works, I'll let you all know. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time for more tasty fun and frolics. And bye for now.